So talking about cross-polarized uh, photography, basically, as I told you, I developed this set of filters for fixed light twin. And it was a bit challenging because I didn't know how to actually fit it in the saw box. It looks like almost impossible. However, there is a solution. You just remove the diffusers and the filters, they just go magnetically inside the saw box. So it's a matter of maybe five seconds to attach it. And also there is a filter for the lens, which should be placed with these uh, structures parallel with the saw boxes. So not like this. It should be oriented like that. Uh, because only if you place it like this, you will obtain the polarized effect. And also, you should close the angle of the saw boxes, like so, to obtain the polarized photo. Of course, you should have some samples with a shade guide and uh, place it next to the teeth. Basically, you need like two or three uh, samples so the technician can appreciate the color. All right, so let me shoot. Okay, so you see the polarized effect. So of course, if you have a shade guide, the technician will be able to appreciate uh, the color better than if you provide him with a um, normal photo. But there is something that I want to mention. Basically, when you use the filters, you have something in front of the flashes. So this will act as a factor that will decrease the exposure. So for example, if I shot a close-up like that in this position with uh, ISO 100, I need to increase the exposure. So either I increase the ISO, like I've done in this case. Okay, so ISO was 100, now it's 160 because I need more light or more sensitivity of the sensor, uh, better set. Or I can keep the ISO 100 and I can open the aperture. So let's do this instead of increasing the ISO. Okay, so let me open the aperture to F22, let's say. All right, I have a perfect exposure. So moving the ISO from 100 to 160, or on the other hand, opening the aperture from F25 to F22 is the same thing. You have these two options to increase the exposure that you lose by using the filters. Let me show you the cross-polarized filter for the ring flash. So basically, you have this structure with the filter with the magnetic connection. So what I'm doing with the fixed light ring, I'm actually removing the deflector from the middle because I need the flash to be available for the filter. And in the same way, I'm attaching the filter with the magnetic connection. Of course, it has to be in this position. And what I'm doing also, I'm placing the saw box in the back. Okay, so it was here. I place it here, such as it's not bouncing so much the light from behind the filter. So let's take a photo. The power of the flash should be on 1 per 4. Okay, not full power because obviously I don't have the deflector deviating the light on the sides. And let me try to shoot F25, ISO 100, let's see what's happening. So the photo is underexposed, why? Because I have the filter. So the filter is reducing from the intensity of the light. So again, what can I do? I can either increase the ISO from 100 to 160 or decrease the aperture, so opening the aperture from F25 to F22 in the same way that we've done with the twin setup. So let's first increase the ISO from 100 to 160. It's still underexposed. Let's try to 50. So it's good that we are doing this exercise because the power of the flash might differ from flash to flash. You need to understand how to tweak the settings um, in this scenario, in, in this particular scenario. And of course, once you know the settings, you can always use the same settings. So now I'm, I'm ISO 250. So ISO 250, still underexposed. Let's go more just for the sake of the exercise. 3, 320. So now it's properly exposed. So see, I literally had to go from 100 to 320 in terms of increasing the ISO, and only now I'm properly exposed. The photo is okay. So let's do the other exercise. Let's put the ISO back to 100 and work with the aperture for the same purpose. So let's open the aperture to F22, for example. F22 underexposed. How about going to F18? 
directly. Almost okay, but still underexposed. I can also increase the power of the flash. Okay, for example, if I increase the power of the flash from one per four to half of the power, of course I will have more light. And proper exposure. If I keep the power of the flash on one per four, like it was before, Instead of going F16 or even lower, I can actually work with both of these values. So let's try F22 ISO 200. And it's properly exposed. So if you ask me, I would simplify the process. I will keep the flash of the power on one per four. I don't want to play with too many factors and only play with the aperture and the ISO. So ISO 200, F22.